Okay, let's go for our first game versus Mewtwo V Star with Toad Scroll and Speed Ops EX. One extra hammer is messing up the ratio, apparently. The one extra hammer. Maybe we should go back to two, two star grunt, three hammers, and two helmets. It would have too many supporter cards, though. Again, with the mulligan. Oh my god, Venusaur as the active. What is happening? One extra hammer and the whole ratio goes to shit. Oh man, I hate this game so much, yo. Why are we gonna switch the Venusaur out now? It's so fucking annoying. Ah. Uh. Thank you. Oh my god, what is happening? Uh, I don't know what to get. We got two Ultra Balls. One Hammer. Hmm. Probably gonna play a research though. I don't think Toad School have any value. Honestly. Oh shit, we got the 40 HB one. <laughs> oh well. We could actually play String Hall to pull out <coughs> the Mewtwo. If we pull out the Mewtwo, they can't knock us out, right? Unless if they do energy switch. Okay, we got the discard. I'm gonna put the Lunatone, another Lunatone. Let's hope we get ahead here. Because they can quite easily um, discard one energy and kill us with another Soul Rock. Oh man! What are we gonna do? If they get three energies on the Lunatone, we're done. We didn't even get the other energy, oh man. Just need the Lilligan though. Please don't discard, please don't discard. Please don't discard. Please don't discard. Please. Give me one more turn at least. Yay, thank god. Oh. Forty HP, yikes. Got a boss? I could boss the Soul Rock. I'm not sure what to boss though. I forgot to check what we have in the deck. Okay, we have a Tarantula in the price, so we need to get this one, obviously. Tarantula, Tarantula, what a weird name. Okay, two speed ups, another 
one of that. Let's just get two energies. Just to be safe. I'm not sure about Toad Scroll for this game. Um How much are we doing? We could kill the Soul Rock, but then they would hit us again. I feel like they can't retreat though. If we pull out the Mewtwo, they can't retreat, right? That would make a lot of sense. Draw two cards. They need the switch now. I'm trying to dig for the switch. They got one of the cross switcher. That was pretty close. No Greninja though. Greninja would be so perfect for a Mewtwo V Star. Do they have it inside the deck? Probably. <coughs> they played a nest ball though. Could have gotten the Greninja. <coughs> Crushing Armor is not doing anything for this game. It is just not doing anything. It's buying us a little bit more time I guess. Because that means they can't attach as much energy on the same Lunatone. That's the only plus side I guess. Are we actually going to play that? Oh, come on. Give me a break. Wire hang. 210 damage. Kill off the Mewtwo. Another speed ups. Yeah. I think playing multiple boss for speed ups is like the best move. Boss Serena for speed ups is so good. Because then they get trapped, they can't do anything. They have switch though. If they play a switch, we're done. But I don't think in standard right now, people play a lot of switch cards. Because they got like beach card. Um, what else do they have? I don't think people play a lot of switch cards now. You don't really need them. It's not really a... Uh, big threat it's not a it's not that important okay we're just gonna evolve that one let's get a toad school now not too sure though should be getting another speed ops but just to be cheeky let's get a toad school I don't think we need that Two hundred and ten damage. I don't think we can kill the V Star with one hit, anyways. So no regrets. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, one, two, three, four, five, though. One hundred and fifty plus ninety. Two forty. Even if we have all four speed ups, it wouldn't be enough to kill the Mewtwo. Is it 280? I think it's 270. Oh, it's actually 280 HP. Mewtwo. We might be helping them with the rugged helmet though. 
Because <laughs> they still need to attach one from their hand for me too. So I don't think we should have done the helmet. That was quite a stupid move. Oh well. Uh, we got the experience share. <clears throat> we need to get another speed ops. Yikes, this is scary. Code scroll is not doing anything. <laughs> oh well. So if they discard from the Mewtwo, they're getting punished, right? But they're probably going to discard from the Lunatone. If only we have an Avery. Avery would be helping us so much right now. Oh man. We're going to get another hammer. Let's do another hammer. Yeah! Discard that one, of course. Attach to that. Mesa Goza. Oh man. We got Venusaur. We got no cricket tune, so speed ups is dead on the next turn. If they can somehow get two energy, so they got Raihan. <clears throat> oh man, I forgot they got Raihan. Shit. We need Toad Scroll apparently. Oh shit, this is bad. If they play the Raihan right, they got the knockout here. Okay, they attach to the Lunatone. That's interesting. No Raihan, thank god. They need the switch though. Can they actually kill us with the Lunatone? I don't think so. That would be pretty insane. Four soul rocks. Four goddamn soul rocks. Oh no, it's a cross switcher. They're gonna pull out the Lilligan. Same HP though as the EX. Pretty sure we're safe. If we play the escape rope. We got Serena to target. Oh, we got one last escape rope though. That's bad. Oh man, one energy retreat. Damn it. We have to play the escape rope. They're just gonna give us the soul rock though. If they give us a soul rock, it would be really bad. We got a boss. We have a boss somewhere. Oh no, we played the boss. Oh man. That's terrible. They're gonna play the boss though. Oh shit. This sucks. What are we gonna attach that to? Lilligan? I guess. 
Are we gonna play that? I don't know what to do. Holy shit, this is hard. We got 18 cards left. We're probably gonna discard the energy though. Let's hope not. Oh man. It's got a one energy. If we can get one energy. Okay, there we go. Because we're hitting twice as much damage on the Soul Rock. <clears throat> so they need the switch. Because we got two speed ups. Cross switcher though. Cross switcher is really annoying. Gonna discard the Lilligan, obviously. And that one, I guess. Because we need the draw support. So now they can't do the boss anymore. They can't boss the Lilligan for extra prizes. They just helped us. Thank you for playing an Avery. So they need three turns or like double boss. If they do a boss, oh, they don't really need to boss the Lilligan though. They just need to boss the speed ops. Okay, we're just going to attach it here. And play that. Oh shit, we got zero cards left. Oh no. What? Haha, <laughs> I, I, I didn't understand what was happening. If we discard the Serena though, that would be quite terrible. Okay. If they don't have any more energy for Mewtwo, that would be quite terrible for them. We have Miriam for another speed ops. So that's like 3, 4, 5, 150. So. 240. We need two hits though. We need Eerie Tentacle. We need to hit with Eerie Tentacle twice. Which is kind of impossible. Serena, I don't think is gonna help us. If they play a Raihan though, we have to play Serena. I feel like we have to play Serena. Oh no, they're actually going to plan on attacking with Lunatone? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> 8 energies. Are they going to do a Raihan? That is the big question. Are they actually going to play a Raihan? They don't have the retreat though. They don't have the means to retreat. So I feel like bossing uh, Serena on the Mewtwo is the best strategy right now. Because then they get stuck. Oh, we should have done Miriam first. Oh, we can't play Miriam. Oh, we did it already. We did the supporter already. If we can last one more turn, then we got a knockout. Uh... Oh, we can't retreat though. If we can somehow retreat, we can knock it out with Wire Hang. No switch! Yeah! <laughs> they ran out of their switch, uh, cross switcher. We won again against Mewtwo V... V Star, not V Union. Oh yeah! Alright, on to the next game. Now we're up against Gengar V Max. And do we go heads? Do we go tails? Let's just go tails. Come on, yay! This is like a casino game. Like, every time you join a casino, like a new a new establishment, they always give you the most heads the first few times. And the moment you start winning, the moment you start uh, cashing in your prizes, 
eventually they're gonna give you tails over and over they're gonna start giving you nothing but tails for the rest of the game like for the rest of the time you are a patron there for the rest of the time in the casino you're gonna get nothing but tails so i feel like pokemon tcg is kind of a scam honestly because we keep getting tails uh on not just on PTCGO, but now we're getting tails on PTCGL, just kind of <laughs> proving my point, to be honest. So we got no bush shake on the first turn, but that's fine. We have two speed ups in our hand. Let's hope they don't play a judge. That's actually a perfect hand right there. We got two speed ups, an extra energy, and a Serena. We even got the crushing hammer. So this is mainly a speed up CX deck, but I feel like it has the potential to do a control strategy, locking our opponent with a uh, Toad Scroll by pushing the energy onto the bench and, you know, forcing them to satisfy the attack cost or the retreat cost on the active. If they can't satisfy both, they have to dig for the switch card. And if they dig too far, they may end up decking, them, uh, decking themselves out. Which is kind of our second, uh, you know, the second move, the secondary strategy for this deck. We can either choose to draw all six prizes for the win, or deck our opponent out. Trap territory. We're trapping them with Speed Ups' ability and also Toad Scrolls attack. So for standard right now, I don't think many people play that many switch cards in their deck. Uh, you don't really need that many switches to get by. So even for my deck, for this one, we have only two escape rope. We have no fully sorted girl. We have no switches, no uh, switch card, no cross switcher. Uh, if they play a lost box though, they would probably have a lot of switch cards, but they need to spend those. They need to spend quite a lot of them early game to lose enough cards with comfy. So eventually they would run out of their switch cards. And by then, we could actually lock them. They are losting multiple cards and drawing a lot from the deck as well. So chances are they could deck out a lot easier than normal decks. And we could actually trap them late game with our Toad Scroll speed ups combo. Here comes the VMAX. They got Dark Patch for it as well. So Dark Patch is going to be very disruptive because we are discarding with Crushing Hammer, but they are reattaching it with the item from the discard pile. Okay, we just need three speed ups on uh, in play uh, to be able to knock out the Gengar VMAX if we can somehow push down one energy with the Toad Scroll. So we have no Toad Scroll in play yet. We better be benching one soon. Or if we have 4 speed ups in play, we could actually knock out a Gengar with one hit. Because uh, they have to play single strike roar. If they roar a second time, we just need 4 speed ups in play. If they roar, you know, if they don't roar enough times, it would be a bit more difficult. Okay, they actually did escape rope but didn't get the energy. Fortunately, they didn't play a research or anything to get the final energy on Gengar to attack. So, f Panic Fear is only doing 60x for each V Pokemon in your opponent's field. And since we have no V Pokemon in play, we have no Lilligan, they're not doing any damage with Panic Fear. Okay, we're gonna do a boss on the Houndoom because it has the highest retreat. So now we're locking them with 4 energy retreat, forcing them to attack with nothing but the Houndoom. Um, they can eventually knock us out though, because they got 90 damage with 2 single strike energy on the Houndoom. 90 is quite a lot, honestly. They just need 3 turns to finish us to finish off the speed ups in the active. And they can even earn back the energy later on. Yeah, the Mesogoza is fucking us right now. Because we're just not getting any heads, and they're getting so many heads from the Mesogoza. It's so unfair, man. There we go. They're gonna attack with the Houndoom. We're still not getting the energy, though. 
which is very frustrating. So we can't play Miriam. Bad thing about Miriam is that if you don't have any Pokemon in the discard pile to shuffle back into the deck, you're not allowed to draw 3 cards. You can't actually play it without shuffling Pokemons from the discard pile. And we finally got the energy, but are we gonna attack though? Are we actually gonna um, play it on the active? I'm not too sure. We could maybe wait one more turn. We got another Tails. Look at that. If we attach it to the active, it would be quite scary. Because they just need one more energy on the Gengar to knock us out. <laughs> emoji battle. Battle of the emojis, guys. <laughs> Okay, we got another Tails with Mesagoza, but whatever. We're gonna play the Capturing Aroma on the next turn. Capture a uh, Toad School, evolve with the Mesagoza if we get a heads. And we should be killing off the Houndoom on the next turn already. If we don't, it would be pretty bad. Because they already have 180 damage. 18 damage counters on our active um, is close to dying. So if we are knocking out... If we do knock out the Houndoom in the active though with speed ups, they're probably going to come back with the Gengar. And then we're going to lose one of our ability. We're going to lose one, uh, one colorless from our opponent's Gengar's retreat cost. And that means we're doing less damage with the next speed ups. So I feel like we should be attacking with Toad School. We should be retreating to the bench and doing something else. <coughs> we got the Crushing Hammer. We're gonna discard from the Gengar. I feel like that's better. Because they could quite easily just reattach onto the Houndoom to attack. There, I feel like there's no point to discard from the Houndoom. Might as well prepare for the Gengar. If they don't have the urn though, if they don't have the urn, they can't actually attack on the next turn. Oh wait, we're discarding the darkness. So they need they need a darkness from their hand. If they play a dark patch, if they play too many dark patches, they may just not be able to switch. If they can't switch though, they have to put Gengar in the active. If they play a dark patch, they can't actually attack on the next turn. So Apparently, I think we're gonna gamble. I'm not too sure what we did here, but I feel like we gambled for the knockout. And because Gengar just need one one last energy though. If they play the urn, or if they play an energy from their hand, they got the knockout against our speed ups. We got Miriam, so we shouldn't be too worried. We can shuffle back our speed ups, the first copy into the deck. And play the Toad Scroll to push down the single strike energy onto the Greninja. That would be pretty fun to play. That would be so fun. Because we get to push down a single strike energy and discard it from the Greninja. Okay, they got another Tails from the Mesagoza. They're playing Gengar Halloween Box with... The card sleeve. Very interesting. And they did escape rope. Okay. Um, Houndoom Houndour is actually weak towards grass. So Toad School is doing twice as much damage. All we need is uh, one Eerie Tentacle to knock it out. If they don't evolve. And there we go. They didn't evolve. We got one extra prize. Um, we have experience share though. Do we? we? I don't think we attach the experience share. Oh, that's a bit sad. So if they do a boss on one of the speed ups, they're probably going to do it on, you know, the injured one. If they kill off the speed ups with the energy, then we can't attack on the next turn. We are forced to play Toad Scroll. Meso goes up for another Tails. Oh... We're not going to gloat here. 
Things always goes to shit if you gloat too much. If you're way too cocky, nothing ever goes your way. So don't be cocky, guys. <laughs> Even when you're on the winning side, just don't be cocky. Don't let your guard down. Okay, we got the Toad School. I think we got a knockout here. We got four speed ups, and we have four damage counters on the Gengar. So we're doing 240 damage, I think. Oh, they got three energy, three colorless retreat costs though. Gengar is three energy retreat. So we got actually 270 damage, which is apparently enough to knock it out. Oh no, 270, right? 300 damage? I'm not sure how much we did there. 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 300 damage, I'm pretty sure. So 300 plus 4 damage counter is more than enough. And now they got nothing, no Gengar on the bench. They got nothing to finish off our speed ups. They may just earn back the energy and play, uh, knock us out with Houndoom. It's still possible, actually. They got Dark Patch, though. How much damage do they need? They just need 80 damage. 80 damage, they got 50 plus 20 from the Single Strike. That's actually not enough. They need two Single Strike energies. Or like a Vitality Ban. Um, my bad. A Defiance Ban. So we won against Gengar VMAX. Amazing. Okay, let's go for the next one. Up against me right on now. The king of PTCG meta standard for Scarlet and Violet. Who else is gonna be king, right? Gardevoir? Nah. Miraidon. <laughs> I've honestly no idea which one's better. Is Gardevoir EX better than Miraidon? Gardevoir needs to evolve though. Miraidon is like super fast. So if you play like Avery with Miraidon, I don't think you get, I don't think you have the luxury, because you need like Research Judge. If you play Avery though, if you have somehow enough Raikou for the draw support, you could actually do Avery uh, to cut down Gardevoir's bench, and that means they can't bench as many routes, they can't bench as many, uh, you know, they can't play as many Psychic Pokemon's as they want. And if you get early knockouts in the active as well, that would be really, really good. It would help you so much more. Gardevoir needs time to discard their energy. They need time to evolve the Curlia while also doing the Rare Candy. If they play Rare Candy, they can't draw cards though. That's the bad thing. Um, if they draw cards, they get to discard energy as well. So it takes a lot of time, but eventually it's going to be really powerful. Once this setup is done, God of War is like super strong, they can collect an extra prize. Uh, if they play a VMAX, like an Ilaiki VMAX, God of War can actually do a boss with uh, Zashin doing a knockout on the Ilaiki VMAX for 4 prize draw with Sky Seal Stone. So I feel like God of War could stand a good chance against Miraidon still. And it's kind of like Battle of the Gods, because both decks are so powerful, you honestly have no idea which one is going to win. Overpowered, honestly, because they got unlimited energy from this card pile for God of War. They got turbo speed, like so fast. They got insta bench with tandem unit and insta attack. They can attack doing 200 plus damage already on the first turn with electric generator and beach court. Such an easy combo. It's almost like you don't even have to try. <laughs> Where is the fun in that? Okay, we got Toad Scroll in the active, and now we're gonna start pushing that energy onto the bench. Um, I'm not sure which one to transfer to though. If we transfer to the Ilaki, they could just evolve an attack with the VMAX, and the VMAX actually has zero retreat as well, so we're only adding one colorless. For now, because we have only one speed up CX in play, uh, and they can quite easily retrieve the beach court. Oh, beach court doesn't work on evolutions though, it only works on basic. 
So if, even if they have a beach card, they can't be treated with the VMAX. Uh, but they're going to do a switch right now. The reason I'm speculating about the Elagi is because, you know, they probably have a couple of switch cards in inside the deck. And they can probably quite easily get it with Arvin. So if they play uh, the escape rope or the switch early, eventually we can lock them by doing a boss. We can switch lock them. Uh, I don't think they have that many switch cards because they have uh, Beach Court, which is their main uh, retreat option. So here comes the escape rope. And they play the judge. We got the ideal hand though. Because we played Lilligan's ability on the last turn and we got an energy, an extra energy with another evolution. But now we're getting nothing. Thanks to the judge. They played the generator for no energy though. That's a good sign. And here comes Forest Seal Stone for another generator. They could just get a research for the next turn though. Okay, it's another generator. And they got no energies again. <laughs> Oh my god, they conceded. Because they got trapped in the active though. They're getting trapped in the active um, with the Ilaki. If they somehow get the beach court though, they can retreat early. But eventually we got the retreat lock. I feel like eventually we could control them a lot easier. So bush shake is going to help if you get it early against me right on. But unfortunately for that game, we couldn't dig it out. Oh well. I'll take the win. Okay, let's go for one more with Toad Screw Speed Ops, the Shitake Snare. Shroom. Shrooms. We're getting high on them shrooms, yo. Toad Screw. Such a fun name, isn't it? <laughs> okay, it's a Ditto deck. Um, we got Crushing Hammer. So if they play Double Turbo uh, with any other... If they play Don Dozo with Double Turbo, we can quite easily discard their energies... Um, to stop them a little bit, to slow them down. But they probably have experience share, Raihan, with the basic energy. If they do that, uh, we could still lock them with our retreat, with our uh, trap territory ability, and also push those energies onto a different Pokemon. So we could waste their energies, right? We could waste their energy on the active. If they keep attaching to the active, we could just transfer it to the same Pokemon over and over until they run out of their energies. If they don't attach to the same Pokemon, they're probably going to charge up the bench. If they, you know, ignore the active, we're just not going to attack it at all. We're just not going to damage the active because there's no point. If we knock out the active, then they get free, right? So we want to be forcing them to do the switch, and eventually if they run out of their switch cards, the final boss or the final escape rope is going to help us win the game by trapping them um, completely in the active. And, you know, they can't retreat, they can't attack. Uh, we have our Rugged Helmet, we have our Toad Scroll, Team Star Grunt. Eventually they get stuck in the active without having anything, uh, you know, any option but to concede and you know finish the game they may even deck out they may just keep playing the game until they deck out so it's a very fun strategy um, pushing those energies down even if it's just one we got uh, you know crushing hammer and team star grunt to fall back on to reduce their energy even more and that rugged helmet as well so do not underestimate Toad Scroll. Here comes a double turbo and they have Radiant Jirachi to do Astro Misfortune. Let's hope they don't get double heads. If they get double heads here, I would be pretty um, frustrated. 
I would be pretty annoyed. Cause they don't even have Glimwood Tangle. That card is no longer no longer available for standard. And they're gonna do a boss on the Lilligan. Oh my gosh, we got Ultra Ball for the V Star. They better not knock out the V They better not knock out our Lilligan right now. Okay, they got two tails. Look at that. That's pretty sad. Oh well. Are we gonna play the escape rope? Are we gonna play Dance gracefully? Or are we gonna evolve and do Star Perfume? I feel like escape rope has no value this turn because we're not actually pushing any energies from the ditto. So we should be playing the hammer and do the escape rope on the next turn because I don't think we should be discarding it since we only have one other copy in the deck. Uh, we could get the energies though. If we get the energies with Litigan, we could retreat already. Oh, I forgot. We could actually retreat with Litigan. Because we have an energy on Toad Screw already on the last turn. I'm not sure if we should have drawn cards with the basic. Because the V-Star has only one energy retreat. And we could have done... Um, we could have actually played our uh, Eerie Tentacle to push that double turbo onto the Ditto. But that would mean Ditto gets to attack though, right? Pretty sure it's a Don Dozo deck, but I'm not sure yet. What are they playing? Could be a Pogo Magikarp Spiritomb. Okay, it's a dark they have a darkness energy, so it's definitely a spirit tomb now. There we go. Chain of Spirits. Doing 60x damage for each copy of Spirit Tomb in your discard pile, plus 10 base. So they're doing a max of 250 damage. 250 max with Defiance Ban is actually enough to knock us out. It's enough to kill the Speed Up CX with one hit. So I feel like we should be focusing more on our control strategy. Because if we try to draw all 6 prizes for the win, they probably have the advantage there. They probably could uh, do it a lot faster. Because they have that much damage in their belt. They're doing so much more damage than us. Gonna play Crushing Hammer to cut off the double turbo. And we're gonna push down uh, the Darkness energy from the Ditto onto the Jirachi. So they got not enough energy to attack with the active Ditto after playing the Escape Rope. And here comes Star Perfume for our first speed ups. Locking the Ditto in the active spot. So they need 2 energy retreat for Ditto, and that means uh, they can't retreat on the next turn if they attach from their hand. It's still not enough, they need the Beach Court. If they somehow play a Beach Court in their deck, it would be quite depressing. Because we don't actually have enough speed ups yet. We don't have enough in play to lock them as yet, which is pretty sad. We got so many VIP pass and nest balls though. We got four copies of the Tarantula. I'm not sure why they're not giving us at least two copies on the first turn. I think the reason being we're choosing to bench the Lilligan. We chose to bench the Lilligan if we have like an extra nest ball though. We could have gotten one Lilligan and two more Tarantulas. Alrighty, Eerie Tentacle transferring the energy onto the Jirachi. You can actually choose though, whether to transfer or not. You can actually choose not to move the energy from the active to the bench. Okay, what are they going to do now? They're stuck in the active. They could still dig for the switch and play Astro Misfortune for the knockout. Flipping two coins is quite risky though. You need two heads and I don't think the odds are in their favor. Here comes another boss and they're actually going to pull out the Lilligan again. Which is pretty annoying. It, it only has one energy retreat though. So thank god we don't have a Venusaur on the bench yet. Um, but not having the Venusaur could actually be a bad thing. Because we got no draw support. We need 3 energies to attack with Litigan, and they got the double turbo. 
So they can actually retreat right now. There we go. No misfortune yet. So I feel like we should... We got the hammer. We should retreat with the Lilligan. Just to play Toad Scroll. I'm not too sure if we should play that though. So we got a heads. We don't need to play Eerie Tentacle yet. Um, should we actually play Lilligan to attack? We would need to wait for two more energies though. I don't think we have a Venusaur in the deck. I think it got prized. Because we would definitely have gotten it with our Star Perfume. So now we need the Heavy Ball just to get the draw support. Which is kind of depressing because we don't have enough supporter cards to draw cards. We got Miss Fortune Sister and we're just going to discard your items. Um, we should have discarded the Heavy Ball there because they actually do have a Spiritum Prize. But I was kind of thinking, you know, if we don't discard it, then at least they get stuck for a bit longer until we get the energies to attack. But it is a long shot though because we need two more energies and we are not playing that many copies. We have only 9 copies of basic energy in this deck, and 1 energy search, 1 Arvan to get the energy search. So not many ways to get the energy. And we have already attached 2 copies. I feel like we discarded a few as well. Just gonna pass the turn until they get the energy on the Jirachi, we're not gonna do anything. So I forgot that Jirachi is actually resistant to Grass Pokemon. So being resistant means they are taking 30 less damage from Toad Scroll, And we are actually doing 0 damage with Eevee Tentacle. But we are at least allowed to move the energy onto the bench. So we're definitely not going to knock out the Jirachi with the Toad Scroll Unless if we keep attaching more energies to play Triple Smash. Um, which isn't the ideal thing to do. Because we can't really be wasting our energies on the Toad Scroll. If we want to do a knockout, might as well attach it to the Speed Ops. Okay. You're just choosing to attach to the Ditto now, because it's kind of the same thing. If, if they attach to the Jirachi, we would transfer it back to the Ditto, so there's no difference. They're just saving everyone the trouble. Okay, we're not doing any damage. Might as well just pause the turn. We got another energy though for our speed ops. But are we gonna attach it? Are we gonna just leave it in our hand? I don't know. What's the best thing to do? Let's spread the energies onto the second one. Um, eventually we would get it to attack. If they get the switch though, then that would have been a big mistake. We should have just waited for the second the second copy of our basic. If we got another energy, only then should we be playing, uh, attaching it to the second speed ops. Because now we have no security. I think we played the judge a bit too early. Because if we want to deck them out, we could actually shuffle our hand a lot later. Wait till they expand, use up all their resources, discard their deck, and eventually play judge to, you know, shuffle back our hand because eventually we would have more cards in the deck if we play the judge at the right time we would essentially have way more cards in the deck than our opponent Okay, they play the heavy ball for the spirit tomb But at least they're not getting the switch Chain of Spirits. They have three copies of the Lost Origin Spiritum and also one copy of the one from Astro Radiance, I think. I'm not too sure which, which set is from, but it has an attack, Shrieking Pain or something, uh, that allows you to place damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. Uh, as much damage counters as they have Pokemons in their discard pile. And then after that, they, you actually have to 
your opponent actually have to shuffle back all of those Pokemon into their deck. So if they play like, uh, you know, a Twin Spirit Tomb deck, or if they play, you know, anything that rely on discarded Pokemons, like uh, Zorak Box, um, Wormadam, you know, uh, Grievart, there's the new Grievart that does more damage for each Psychic Pokemon in the discard pile. If they play uh, Don Dozo with Tatsugiri, you actually get to shuffle back Tatsugiri, all of their Tatsugiri back into their deck and forcing them to re-discard, to discard all of them all over again. The bad thing though is that you're not doing that much damage. You're only placing damage counters and you may not be able to place as much as you like. It's one colorless though, so Ditto actually gets to play it as well. So after doing Chain of Spirits, if you're not... If you don't get your Defiance Band at the right time, if you can't actually knock out uh, the V-Star in the active, you got Shrieking Pain to collect the knockout while also shuffling back all of their Pokemon from the discard pile. And that means they would have a lot more Pokemons and a lot less chance of getting their supporter cards, of getting drawing out the energies or whatever, whatever else they need to support their strategy. They would be stuck with nothing but Pokemons. Every turn drawing nothing but Pokemons. That would be quite terrible, right? So it's a disruption of sorts, um, you know, it's also a, a way of finishing off Pokemons that have, you know, like 20 HP remaining on the bench. If they hit Chain of Spirits twice on two different Pokemons, they can actually do Shrieking Spirits on the third strike to finish off two V-Stars on the bench, for example. Or like two V-Maxes on the bench, that would be a straight multi-price, six-price knockout. So it's a very fun strategy, for sure. I've thought of it, I've definitely thought of it, like Chain of Spirits with Shrieking Pain, very obvious combo. But you could even do like the third Spiritomb. There's a new Spiritomb with the Doom Decree ability, uh, Doom Decree Attack, my bad, uh, that allows you to flip two coins for a knockout. So if you get two heads, it's the same as Jirachi's Astro Misfortune. If you get two heads, you get an instant knockout on your opponent's active. Uh, but we have no more Glimwood Tangle, as I said. We still have Blunder Policy though. And who knows, they may come up with new cards to support coin flips, which would be super cool. They may bring back the old Will card, um, allowing you to flip ahead for the first coin flip that, uh, you know, that you play only for the first coin flip. But it's a supporter card though, I don't think it's worth playing a supporter just to get one heads. Sometimes it's worth it, but most times it isn't. If it's like a big effect, right, if you flip one coin for a big effect, then it would be very, very much worth it. If you're flipping multiple coins, I don't think you should be playing Will. You never know when they're going to revive a supporter though. Because they revive Skyla for Sword and Shield. Skyla is actually a, uh, a very old XY card. I'm not sure if we had Skyla for Sun and Moon though. I'm pretty sure we don't. I don't remember a Sun and Moon Skyla art. Okay, we're gonna transfer the double turbo onto the Ditto. So now Ditto is doing 20 less damage for Chain of Spirits. Thank you for the double turbo. They are gambling though, they are risking the coin flip. Okay. They have Grant for the discard. Because um, if they have Spirit Tomb in their hand, they get to discard it and retrieve the supporter from the discard pile. So Grant is actually a very fun card to play. <coughs> Especially for decks like Don Dozo, Spirit Tomb, um, Magikarp. I don't think Magikarp works for the EX though. If you have like Gyarados EX in the discard pile, Magikarp is not doing more damage. Right, we had the old Pogo Magikarp doing... Uh, 30x damage for each Magikarp and Gyarados in your discard pile. I don't think it includes any Gyarados V or EX. Because that would be quite broken. It would be doing so much more damage if it includes those other Pokemons as well. Okay, they got Primordial Altar. Uh, looking at the top card of the deck and choosing whether to discard it or not, or to put it back. So at some point we made a huge mistake because they are not getting the switch card and apparently they're getting stuck for so many turns. 
we should be focusing on keeping our deck strong by you know getting by having as many cards in the deck as possible and not playing that many cards anyways we're gonna just push down another double turbo onto the bench they're not getting that lucky with the coin flip thank god if they get two heads they got a straight knockout on the toad scroll which is still not that big of a deal um but we have no energies to attack though on the next turn so that was definitely a huge mistake attaching the second copy the second energy onto the other speed ops we should have just kept it in our hand what were we thinking we got serena to draw cards though we can draw out the energy if they knock out uh the toad scroll but if we draw too many cards we would be decking ourselves out so it's basically a race towards who gets um <clears throat> who gets the right cards first we need the energy they need the switch um if we keep digging though we may end up discarding too many cards from the deck so i feel like we should not be digging for too many things yeah we definitely made a mistake at some point in the game i think we uh because now we have one card less than our opponent in the deck so they are a little bit faster than us uh, in terms of the deck count. So we are actually decking, we are decking out first before our opponent. Uh, just because we did the boost shake. We should not have played the boost shake just now. I think we played Arvin to search for the boost shake and played it for the toad scroll on the bench. That was the biggest mistake because that means we have a lot less cards in our deck than we originally did. And now we have nothing but Miriam to fall back on to shuffle back our Pokemon after discarding with Ultra Ball. So we can still save ourselves if they didn't play the research though. We may stand a chance of decking out first if we don't get the Miriam. If we have the Miriam prized, that would be quite terrible. So that's our uh, final ticket to save ourselves. Uh, is, if, is if we get the Ultra Ball to discard Pokemon from our hand. And then shuffle them back with our Miriam. But we are drawing three cards though. Bad thing about Miriam is that even after the shuffle, you are forced to draw three cards. So we definitely should not be playing. Uh, if we want to deck out our opponent, we have to be smart and watch how many cards we have in the deck from the very start. But oh well, I guess we learn from our mistakes. Uh, lemonade from lemons. So, I think it's over though, because they played the research, trying to dig for that switch. <clears throat> They're on the hot seat now. Because they got 4 turns remaining, 4 cards left in the deck. So if they don't do enough knockouts in the next 4 turns, they're done for. They can't draw all 6 prizes for the win, because that is their main strategy. They need to do boss on the speed ups. They need to kill the Toad Scroll and 3 more Pokemons after that after switching and we could actually play a boss again to trap the jirachi back in the active so they need two switches in addition to like multiple knockouts how are they going to do that with the double turbo on the ditto so we're just going to keep transferring onto the same ditto on the bench the darkness energy they're trying to attack with astro misfortune because apparently they have no switch in their deck. Which is kind of risky. They got double turbo for the retreat, I guess. Maybe a beach court. They could have a couple cards prized. So you never know. I think they were definitely trying to dig for the escape rope with their research. Oh, I'm pretty sure they played one of the switch cards early. I'm not sure now. But it looks like they're trapped. And there's no way out. They're actually looking at the top deck with Primordial Altar. Trying to somehow survive this game. Desperately hanging on to the Jirachi. Desperately trying to switch. So we finally got the energy. After so long, we finally got the next energy we need to attack with speed ups 
I feel like Avery could help this deck a lot more. If we could somehow add one copy of Avery into this deck, it may help us disrupt the opponent a lot more. Forcing them to discard cards like the Barrel, Menifee, and leaving only 3 Pokemon on the bench. And it's our last turn, so we actually chose to attack after the game has already ended. Because they got no cards left in the deck to draw from, and we won the game. They still get to choose which active though. <laughs> the Ditto. Of course the Ditto, right? And we won with a control strategy using Toad Scroll for Eerie Tentacle. Yeah, that was so fun though, because we actually get to play Toad Scroll for the win. Which is a first. It's a fighting deck. Coridon? What's taking so long? Yay, we got Toad School. Oh, it's a fighting deck. It's a oh, it's a fighting type. Great Tusk is a fighting type. I thought it's like a rock type. Shouldn't it be a ground type, for God's sake? We got Nest Ball. What do we have prized though? I don't think we have anything prized. Damn it, we have nothing prized. <coughs> um, we need. <coughs> we honestly need a lot of things. I don't know what to do. Don't rush me, I don't know what to do. We're gonna attach it to here already. Um, I don't think they can knock us out yet. Right? They got 50 damage? 40 damage, wow. Okay, are we gonna switch though? We got Miriam, but we can't actually play it. Oh my god, I just I'm just realizing that we can't play the Miriam. Oh that should have been a school vet. Oh no. If you can't shuffle back, you can't actually draw cards. <coughs> <coughs> we better get an ultra ball. Oh man, they got the chest plate. Rock chest plate. Tool card. No. We made a fail mistake. I don't think we can win anymore. If we don't get a proper, if we don't get something good from the top deck, I'm just gonna concede. Because that should have been a Scovet. Okay, we got the V-Star. That's actually the perfect one. Um, let's do... Can't actually get Scovet with the Star Perfume though, which is a bit sad. Um, but we got the Toe Scroll, we got the Energies. I think that's all we need. One, two, three, four, five. We got the experience share.
Okay, we're doing zero damage. But at least we're pushing the energy to the Lucario. And we're not drawing any cards. Oh well. Four energy retreat though. Six. 180. 180. Just, just about just, 270 minus 30. So it's actually not enough. We don't have enough to kill off the Great Tusk. The Great Toss Accelerating Stab <clears throat> One energy attacker, really annoying Unfortunately, there's nothing in standard right now That increases, you know, nothing with ability That increases the attack cost of your opponent's active Pokemon Except for uh, Ariados, Ariados from Lost Origin, I think. Adds one colorless your opponent's V Star Pokemon's attack cost, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're just gonna attach it to here. Oh my god, how did they? Oh dear, they played Dino Cry. Oh no. Holy shit, they played Dino Cry? No way. <clears throat> Are we gonna do enough damage though? Oh, we just need one more speed ops, don't we? We just need one more EX. If we can somehow evolve the next one, let's put it on the Diancy. Should I put it on the Lucario though? Because now they can retreat with the Diancy. If they don't knock us out, we're just gonna keep putting it on the Diancy. Or we could put it on the Revel Room. Oh man. We got the Goza. We got Miriam. I hope we can knock out the Great Task. Oh, they are doing damage to themselves. We don't need. I forgot they're damaging themselves. We don't need the third speed ups. So I don't think we should be helping them, because if we play the Mesa Goza, they could quite easily get the Rever Broom. Um we should be attaching it to this one. <clears throat> let's play let's shuffle back the Toe Scroll. Because we got two copies. Got the experience share, that's great. Um, if we don't play this now though, would it bite us back? I don't think so. We could do it on the next turn. Let's just do it on the next turn. Okay, we got, um, the Rugged Helmet. Fighting type. Pure, pure fighting time, no rock, no ground. So we're not actually hitting the weakness here. Another Varum. This is actually the default uh, Coridon EX deck. The free Coridon EX deck that everybody gets. So, oh well. Uh, we can't actually play this anymore because it had experience share. <laughs> okay, that's pretty weird. Um, we got no level ball. <clears throat> Should we play the score vet though? Kind of want to do. I don't know what to do honestly. Uh. Not too sure what to do here. Are we going to attach to the Tarantula or that one? Let's just do that one.
We can't switch though, can we? Oh, we're not drawing any cards with Venusaur. Ooh, shake. One copy in a deck. Not sure if it's worth playing. I don't think we should have any boost shake. If we're playing any copies at all, it needs to be at least two. Because if it shows up any later than the first turn, it's not going to help anymore. Let's just swap that for another Ultra Ball. Oh, they didn't kill us. They don't have any energies. No energies to discard. They can't attack though, right? Can't attack during their ne your next turn. Are we doing a knockout? I don't think so. Um, 210 damage. So let's just play... Let's play this one first. We're gonna put that on top. So they can't retreat. Oh, but they can retreat though. They actually can retreat. Oh wait, we got speed ops. Speed ops is locking them from retreat. Duh. They can't actually retreat now. They got three speed ops in play. Oh yeah, now we get to do it. Eerie tentacle with toad scroll. Pushing the energy onto Dianse. And locking them. They can't attack. Uh, not just because of the effect from Wild Impact, but also because they have no, not enough energies. <clears throat> not enough energies from Team Star Grunt and Eevee Tentacle. And they can't retreat, so they need to switch. Oh man. It's the stupid Rock Chest Blade again. I think we got a knockout though, because we just evolved as a third speed ops. Just need to retreat right now. If they don't get the switch though, they might they might just deck themselves out. Dino Cry. I know they're gonna do it. Dino Cry onto oh, they have no choice but to play the ability. And if they do that, I'm not actually too sure what to do, but we got speed ups for the knockout, so <clears throat> we won against Goridon.
Uh, we need experience share. I thought they had the energy from their hand. Oh, they attached it to Mewtwo. That was stupid. That was just weird. Is it weak towards grass? Oh my god, it's weak towards grass. Oh man, we should have hit it just now. We should have attacked with Eerie Tentacle. I didn't know. They may just switch though. Beach court is not gonna help them. They need paths, right? Oh no. They get the boss though. This is kind of bad. Oh dear. This is bad. I don't think we should have played the escape rope just now. I think we played it wrong. 
Maybe we should have done double escape, bro. Three energies. So we finally get to move one of the energy onto the other soul rock because they are. <laughs> Reattaching for this card part. If we don't move it, they're gonna use sun energy on the next turn again. So we have to move it to the other soul rock. There we go. Um, we're going to be very careful and attach it to that one. And let's see what we have in the deck. Okay, whatever. We're going to play that. Might as well. Eerie Tentacle. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. Team Star Grunt. Just need a boss, though. Do we have a boss in the deck? They may have an energy switch, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna test, I'm just gonna test the waters and hope they don't play an energy switch. Oh, we got escape rope though, it's over. We have two escape rope, I didn't realize that. I thought we have one. Oh, it's from the active. Oh my god, it's only from the active? I thought you got to choose. So it's the same as um, the old... One of the battle chandeliers. I forgot her name, but the, the yellow one. The yellow battle chandelier. From Sun and Moon. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Today we are featuring Shitake Snare, our new deck using Speed Up CX to lock them from retreating, adding one colorless to their retreat cost, <clears throat> to their active Pokemon's retreat cost, while also pushing one energy onto the bench with our Toad Screw. Eerie Tentacles allows us to move one energy from our opponent's active Pokemon down to one of their bench, and we also get to play our Team Star Grunt to put it put an energy from our active from our opponent's active Pokemon at the top of their deck while also doing Crushing Hammer for extra discard. So we are basically forcing them uh, locking them in the active spot with our speed up CX's ability while also locking them from attacking by cutting cutting off their energies and you know basically forcing them to do the switch. If they don't get the switch in time they are screwed. If they have the switch in their deck we can actually discard it with Misfortune Sister as well. Or we can at least play a boss if we don't get the if we don't get our fortune sister, we can play a boss to trap them 
to trap another uh, of their bench Pokemon, any other Pokemon in the bench into the active, a uh, heavy Richie cost one, like maybe a big barrel, trap them in the active and collect an extra prize before they actually get you know enough energies on the next one to attack. And if they do set up the next one, we have Crushing Hammer to, you know, stall them as well. We also are playing our Rugged Helmet. So eventually, if we get a knockout with Toad Screw, that would be ideal because we want to be locking them from attacking and retreating while doing 30 damage at a time. And eventually, if we get a knockout with only 30 damage at a time, that would be great. That would be ideal. We even get to attach a Rugged Helmet on this Pokemon, uh, you know, basically putting an energy back into their hand from their active Pokemon if they knock out Toad Scroll with this tool card attached. So we have also experience share to charge up our speed ups, but Rugged Helmet works really well with Toad Scroll, helping us deny them even more energies for the attack cost. And we're also playing two cups of Boost Shake to help us insta evolve our speed up CX from the very start to lock them in the active spot as early as possible, which is gonna help us a lot, especially against Miraidon EX with Beach Court. We also have our regular basic summons, our Mesa Goza to get Pokemons, VIP Pass 4 copy, 4 copies of Nest Ball, 1 level ball, 1 heavy ball, uh, 1 great ball as well with 1 aroma, capturing aroma to get either a basic or evolution depending on the coin flip. Uh, we are also flipping coins with Mesa Goza by the way and also 3 Ultra Ball to get the evolution, 1 Lilligan V Star to get multiple to basically uh, multi-evolve all of our speed ups. If we have our VIP pass early game, we can bench multiple Tarantulas and then on the next turn evolve a Lilligan V Star to use Star Perfume, basically evolving multiple copies of speed ups on our second turn while also doing uh, Eerie Tentacles to deny them the energy. So that's the power of our Star Perfume that we want to uh, the Star Perfume V Star power that we want to be using for this game, for this deck. We also have our Experience Share two copies for speed ups to attack fast, two ex two Escape Rope to switch out from the active spot, one Miriam to shuffle back our Pokemon while drawing three cards, one Boss's Order, one uh, one Serena to draw cards or to do the boss effect against V cards on the bench, one Arvin to get uh, one item and one Tool card. We can either get our Rugged Helmet or Experience Share in addition to an item for the energy search or even for the switch, crushing hammer, balls, yada yada yada. We are also playing 9 copies of basic grass energy uh, with 4 copies of our uh, speed ups EX for the stacking. You know, we can actually stack the ability. The more copies we have in play, the more we can deny them to retreat, the more additional retreat costs they have, and the more we can lock them. We're also playing 2 copies of our Toad Scroll with 2 copies of the basic, 1 copy of the V Star and one copy of Venusaur for the draw support with one Scovet to support our Sunny Bloom. So that's all for the deck list. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time. Have a great day and bye from the people. Enjoy life!